Hello there beautiful and welcome back to The Dark Alchemist. In today's reading, we are going to investigate together with the hawk spirit which risk you are ready to take. Today's reading is really, really special and dear to my heart because it marks the beginning of our 12-month healing journey together. I recently launched a spiritual digital planner that I co-created together with my spirit guides as well as animal spirits coming through, such as the hawk. Uh, if you're interested in that, I'm going to pop a short video up there for you right now. I'm just very briefly going to share about that. Each of these months, one of the animal guides is guiding us through this month and this animal spirit is sharing one of their power qualities with us. Um, in the case of January, the animal guide that is sharing their wisdom with us is of course the hawk, which is why you're here, and the power quality that they want to share with us and that they want to teach us about is taking risks. Now, I'm not going to speak more about the hawk and how this is connected because I've written about it in channel information in the planner. Um, I'm also going to pop a longer video up there for you if you're curious and you want to check it out. Uh, and without further ado, I would say let's hop into our reading. So let's start this off by taking a deep breath in and out. Take a deep breath in, please. And out. Let's take another one. Take a deep breath in. And out. And take a third deep breath in. Take a deep breath in, please. And out. And let us look at our three piles to choose from for today. So today we're actually going to pick just what based on these images and I have three different depictions of the hawk. The first one is for pound number one, this one, this hawk with taking risks. For pile number two, we have the hawk and the thistle. And for pile number three, we have this depiction of the hawk. Now I'm going to zoom in for you and give you about a minute meditation with some music. Take a couple more deep breaths, center yourself, and then see which pile or maybe piles you feel most drawn to. You'll find the timestamps down below, and I will see you in your selected piles. If you felt drawn to this first lovely hawk spirit with taking risks, welcome, welcome, welcome to your reading. I am actually going to start this off by reading straight from the guidebook because each of these hawk cards that you saw represents a slightly different facet of this animal spirit and what they represent. So there are the three different focuses on 
this power quality of taking risks and I feel very strongly for you that I need to read from there from this from this guidebook because you're reading already it feels a bit mysterious I, I gotta be honest with you so let's see with taking risks high plateau a high plateau is a large flat area of land that is significantly higher than the landscape around it. The sites, at least one or two, are sheer and steep. These formations are typically caused by the upwelling of volcanic magma, tectonic movement or even erosion. Some indigenous groups called these tablelands Tepui, which means house of the gods. When you stand at the edge of one of the sheer walls, you can feel that you are in the place of the gods. The sacred landscape wants you to know. When you draw this card, it is time to step beyond your normal everyday life. Take some risks, face your fears, do things in a new and even unorthodox way. Listen more to your inner voice than to the voices and opinions of others. Rather than running from potential failure, embrace it. History has shown that those willing to face failure will often succeed in a massive way later and with that little intro we're going to look at some of your cards i already pulled a few but not that many because like i said i didn't get that many instructions yet but i know that this side of the reading is going to be about um, the fears that you're having towards taking this risk. We're also going to look, of course, at the topic of like the area in which you're, you're uh, ready to take the risk. And we're also going to look at, I think this will be really interesting, this side um, is going to be about how you can overcome that fear. Like what is necessary for you to overcome that fear to move forward and to take that risk that you're ready to take. So let me actually just pull a couple of cards and then we can we can see. So first of all, let me actually get those ready here. <laughs> so on this fear side, I asked for one card, you got two, but they came out as one message. So we will treat them as such. Um, the first one is a copper. And then the copper was supported by the sap of the moon plant and the question i posed when i pulled both of these was what is holding you back from taking that risk okay so that's what this is about and then we have the story that's connected to that the story that has been holding you back and i can, i feel like this is really clear um, so we have the council of animals We have the two of challenges. And we have the seven of challenges. Um, and I say it's really interesting because we have so the challenges here correlate to the swords, and the swords are connected to or a presentation of your mind space, your mindset. Um, and when I pulled specifically the two of challenges card, I mean, when you look at it, you see that there's a person there looking in some kind of magic mirror and like looking at the reflection. And when I pulled this card, I got this intense feeling that you yourself are afraid of your own reflection or more so the image that has been mirrored back to you in the past has made you a bit afraid of yourself. There is, uh, there is a fear surrounding your gifts and talents. And I also want to know that this, this kind of reflection is distorted. Okay. It's not the, it's not the truth. And like with the counts of animals, um, which is this judgment card, I, I feel like in your you've had a lot of difficulties in your relationships in the past and what these relationships have reflected to you or the image that they have reflected back to you of who you are is in itself a projection so people have been 
projecting all sorts of intentions that you might have um, on you as well as some character traits and painted you overall not in the best light. Um, and I want you to know that that was in a projection, so that was not the ultimate truth. I also say that because with the seven of challenges, it's it's very like it's a tricky kind of energy, and I feel like you're reading overall with like taking risks. We're going to talk. I mean, we started already, but we're going to talk a bit more about the role that your mindset plays in taking risks. And with the seven of challenges that we have here in this particular tarot deck, you see that there is um, this house on wheels. I forgot the name for it right now. <laughs> uh, it's fine. The house on wheels. <laughs> it sounds kind of cute. You know, and they got the cozy light on. And I think it's like wandering, wandering people. Um, that are working in the performative arts, I think, performing arts. Anyway, um, they are traveling the country and they stopped for the night in the space where they felt like, okay, it's pretty safe. They made a fire and then they're inside and they're, they're, resting, they're resting from their travels, you know, they're sleeping. And in the depth of the night, uh, the foxes came and they stole parts of their belongings. And... What I get with this feeling um, in connection to this mirror image that was shown back to you is that you were trying to find comfort and you felt previously you felt safe in places where on the surface it looked safe but underneath the surface there was a lot going on and it wasn't actually safe for you. So basically with this mirror image and, and the projection that you have suffered from and the way that people have treated you as a result of that. It's that people were trying to keep you small, trying to keep you from reaching your full potential because in one way or another they were benefiting from you staying in place, from you not being able to move forward, not being able to travel forward um, to take risks in that sense to move ahead so all of these projections are meant to keep you in their own energy field in their own energy field you know if you got a different kind of job for example and, and I feel like career is something that will come up in your reading um, because I already heard that when I just pulled your cards that we're going to talk a bit about career, like life purpose a little bit, just a bit. <laughs> if you got a new job, for example, you would maybe move away, but your circle of friends would change, your hours would change, etc. So your whole uh, social life would change, What your, the, the time that you have to spend with other people, you know, maybe schedules would be vastly different. And because of that, you would not be able to hang out with them anymore or to be available in the way that you are now. So, you know, there are these kind of projections and this is like kind of harsh. Um, for most of them, this is a subconscious thing. This is a subconscious way of um, dropping some comments here and there that make you feel that maybe it's not possible for you or maybe you're not going to get the job or, you know, it's like for most of them it's it's subconscious, but for the entire collective of my pal number ones, there are also like five or six people coming through for for them. It's not subconscious, it's intentional. So they're fully conscious in in, in, in doing that. But again, for most of them, it's a bit more subconscious. There is also in your reading a timing factor at play. And I see that reflected here with the copper and the sap of the moon plant. Because I mean, when you look at the copper here, copper is a very, very beautiful kind of metal, right? It has this very, very warm glow of this bronze kind of color. But if you're not taking care of copper, and cleaning it regularly, the surface starts to oxidize and 
you don't really see the shininess, the brightness anymore, and it's kind of hidden underneath this oxidization, right? I mean, the turquoise can look really pretty as well, but you get my idea. And for you, like with this copper as well, it's this feeling of needing to do a thorough clean out, a thorough clean out to let this like light shine through again. And I say timing factor as well, because we have the sap of the moon plant, and if you want to uh, connect, uh, collect the sap of the moon plant, you know, we're talking about a kind of plant that is only blooming once a month during the full moon for a couple of hours. It's a plant that is hidden in the lore that's connected to this, right? Um, it's hidden somewhere that's difficult to find. You kind of have to solve a couple of riddles, riddles to risk to reach that flower and then you have this short period of time when you're allowed and you're able to actually collect the sap of the moon plant because not only does this rose let me rephrase it not only when you're collecting the sap of the moon plant not only are you collecting the essence of the rose but you're also with it collecting the essence of the moonlight so um, there is a very, very strong magical kind of potential that is hidden underneath the surface. And subconsciously, the people that I've been speaking about previously, like they know that there is a very, very strong potential that you're having towards creating something magnificent. And again, this means that you would change your dynamic, would change you, would move away, and out of selfish reasons, they are trying to keep you down. Again, for most of them, it's a subconscious process, and they're projecting their own wounds onto you of being having this fear of abandonment, etc. And what what it mean? What would it mean if you were to change your life and move forward, etc. But that is there at the one hand of it. Um, I want to take a look now, actually, at. The uh, let's look at a couple of topic cards. Like, what risk are you actually ready to take? Like, what is? <laughs> All right, we got career for you. I'm only laughing because I spoke about career earlier. So we have career. We have dreams, and then the third card that we have is new beginnings. And I want you to pay attention to the fact that both of these look like portals. You see here, we got the portal there and we got the portal there. And I also have one deck that's called, um, was a gateway of light activation, which is about portals. And I also felt called to pull one card. Um, yeah, let me just, I have it right next to me. I'm just gonna pull it for now. And this is the Venusian Galactic Council. Star being guides answer the call, time to shine. Let's take a moment and talk about this. So there is a shift or the risk that you, that you are ready to take is to change some aspect of your career, whether that's changing your career altogether or going for a job that pays you more or a position that um, is more suited to your talents at this moment or where you can grow more. You know, this is a collective reading, so I can't go fully into depth when it comes to that. But there is a risk of taking a new job, of changing careers, of making some kind of bold move when it comes to this and this career change is guided by your dream life and ultimately the kind of life that you would love to live the kind of life that you would love to live but also based on the kind of impact that you would like to have on this planet, on this earth, on this collective, 
on your community, etc. There is something there when it comes to your your dreams and what you want to do with your time. And I feel like me saying that, I'm not telling you anything new. You've been mulling this kind of change over for a while now is, is what I'm hearing. And you know exactly what I'm talking about, which is great because, again, <laughs> Oxford is not giving me more clues when it comes to this so it's good that you know and that's enough um this dream time oh i said dream time right i wanted to say this dream of yours but dream time interesting so you are getting downloads for this new career during your dream time during your dream time some of you may have some memories and may remember these particular parts of their of your dreams some of you won't but just know in your dream time you are getting downloads surrounding this new career of yours because listen up this kind of career change well from your perspective maybe at this moment it feels like okay i just i would like to make this change because the hours are better the pay is better um, i can live maybe more more uh, more relaxed at a more relaxed pace in my life but there is a different kind of career that pulls you very, very strongly and you have been questioning why because it is so different and it's something that for many, many years you have not considered doing. And the reason that you feel such a pull towards it is because it is connected to your soul mission. You see, it's like... You've been going through your life for however many years you have been on this planet right now. And you have been doing things that make sense to you, things that have interested you, but nothing has really pulled you in, so to speak, in that, in that same way that, that you're experiencing this pull now. And it's like all of a sudden, something inside you changed. All of a sudden you started to get a new interest in something. All of a sudden you felt like, oh, I would like to do this. And you couldn't really understand, first of all, where that random idea, it feels random to you, this random idea came from. Like well, what sparked it? Like you, you don't really know anybody who does this kind of work um, and it, it feels kind of fresh and You've been your, you've been logically looking for a connection there with your with your mind and trying to talk yourself out of it even trying to talk yourself out of out of going in that direction and doing that kind of thing, in part because of this kind of um, energy that has been projected onto you and this image that has been created that you've been been believing for a long time. And the hawk spirit wants to come through and, and let you know that, no, actually, the reason that it feels kind of random to you and that the reason that it feels kind of coming, like it's coming out of nowhere for you is because it is actually a soul seed that has been planted in you a long, long, long time ago, basically before you were incarnated here on earth and you created together with your guides and um, councils, etc. You created a soul plan like a blueprint for your life here and this new profession or this career change that is coming to you now needed to be activated now so you are not too early you are not too late you are right on time and I feel like it's really important for you to know because some of you feel like you've wasted a lot of time going in that other direction and doing this other thing and please don't be harsh um, on yourself when it comes to this because you needed to have the experiences that you've had in order to be able to fulfill your mission and to step into your role in the way that you can now the way that you can step into your new role now the way that you can learn the the new skills that you need to learn etc you were not able to hold the same capacity for it back then as you do now so this was a necessary part of your journey even though um if you look at it by like i will say regular human metrics it can feel like a waste of time because you know uh, this is my goal, I want to be a lawyer, and I just go uh, straight at it, and I do that. Um, 
from like soul mission perspective, it's a try. It, it it works a bit different, but that is why this feels a bit random to you. But again, this is the soul seed that has been planted and it has been sprouting and awakening. And and the first moment where this came up for you is again in dream time, whether you're aware of it or not. Uh, and dream time is a very very potent stage in our lives where we can download information and get messages straight from our subconscious, from our higher selves, etc. So know that however random this may feel to you, it's not actually random. It is guided. Okay, it's something that is connected to what you're meant to do here. I'm getting for some of you, this is just a jumping off point in the sense of it's not your, like this idea, this career change that you want to make, it's not your ultimate, I want to say ultimate, that sounds wrong. How can I phrase that? Okay, they said just explain all of it, all right. Um, so, different phases of your life have different purposes. And much as I said that what you did before can feel like a waste of time, but it was a necessary part of your growth journey here in order to arrive at a place where this seed can be activated okay so it was not a waste of time some of you this kind of career and this kind of dream that i spoke of this is your soul mission this is your number one soul mission here and for some of you this is another part of your journey to discovering your full soul purpose basically there is a shift in in seasons in your life and this new season is either you're stepping straight into your soul mission or you are in a stage of being prepared for your soul mission. Okay, but prepared in a more obvious way. It's less underneath the cover now. It's more up on the surface where you can see, sense it, feel it, start to understand it. Because soul missions rarely come up all at once. You rarely see the full picture. You're usually starting to get a couple of steps. Um, and as you're following that, more and more details of your soul mission will be revealed. And the reason for that as well is if you were trying to jump straight to the end point, it would feel too big. It would feel overwhelming. You would not make the change. But if it's a step that's manageable, you can start doing that. To give you an example from me and, and my own life, I first randomly, I say randomly, but I also work a lot with Dreamtime and I get a lot of messages through Dreamtime myself. I first knew I needed to pick up a tarot deck also through Dreamtime and that was, I don't know, five years ago maybe, around five years ago. Um, and I immediately felt connected to it and I had no idea that this was going to be my profession at some point and like a couple of years later I also um, felt this random urge that I needed to learn Reiki and I was like okay I think it's connected to my work but I don't really know how and it's you know all of these like little breadcrumbs of following that kind of journey and um, not knowing how things connect as you are receiving this kind of input, but trusting it enough to start taking some smaller steps, right? And I also find it's important um, to know that this stage that we're talking with a career change and taking risks, it's not necessarily that you need to quit your job tomorrow and, and jump straight into the new thing. It's about preparing your energy for accepting this kind of change, checking your options, seeing what you can do, what can you learn, how can you how can you start to move forward, you know? It's a, like a gradual a gradual thing of taking risks. And with new beginnings, it just underlines what I already said that this is the new beginning in the sense of this is the new, new season of your life. New season of your life that is very connected to your soul purpose. 
and openly going and walking towards it. With the Venusian Galactic Council, star being guides answer the call, time to shine. I'm going to speak about this a bit, a little bit later, but I'm going to pop the career card up here for now. Let's move that over there and let us look at how you can come, how you can overcome that fear of taking risks. You have the card of synchronicity. Oh, okay, I just heard them say, I'm overthinking this. I'm making this up. I'm imagining this. So you are getting a lot of synchronicities. You are and you have been. But you have been telling yourself that uh, you're making this up. You have actually not made, been making any of it up. Start, start to trust yourself a bit more. I feel like learning how to trust yourself is like a very, very big part of overcoming this kind of fear of taking that risk. And it feels risky. I mean, from experience, personal experience, again, like it, this feels more risky than I think anything I've ever done. And it feels so risky because it is not... Like I said, it's not like, okay, I want to be a lawyer and that's my direct path to it. It feels a lot more mysterious. It feels a lot more, um, it's more difficult to describe to other people as well. Because you know, in most cultures, in most places, it's not that accepted to say, okay, I'm, I'm, I have an intuition. I have an intuitive feeling that I need to go and do this. So I'm going to go and do this. Right? It's very, very focused on the 3D rationality of what you can do, what you can create, what is possible, what is not possible. All right, but let me have a couple more looks. Yeah, we got the white world. Yeah, put it in perspective. Yeah, we have the enchanter. Oh yeah, we have the Eight of Challenges. I'm going to stick with this card for a moment because remember in the beginning I spoke about your mind state and how you have adopted these kind of projections that other people had of you, these kind of reflections, and you're like, okay, this is what I'm capable of, this is what I can do, and um, it has basically caused all of this... And see like all of the thorns she's like scratched up torn up all of this kind of situation when it comes to your mind that your mind is not a place that you like to hang out but it's also not a place that is very supportive of you and what you could create in this life at this moment part of you overcoming this fear is to make peace with your mind state and when I say make peace with your mind state, this is something that will take a couple of... I'm not going to give you a time frame, but it it's going to take a, a bit longer than a couple of days, okay? Um, this is a process. You don't need to be perfect at it, you just need to start. Because as you're starting to do this, more and more synchronicity is going to show up as well, you know? So they feed each other. Very important when it comes to these uh, Eight of Swords is for you to start incorporating a practice of noticing your thoughts when they arise, noticing the tone of it, and start developing an awareness for every single time that you tell yourself that something is not possible for you, to, for you to do, for you to achieve, or something is not possible to occur altogether. Once you have an awareness for that, start asking yourself, where did this come from? Where did this thought come from? Where did this belief come from? And start tracing it back through that awareness. It's also important to note that you are not your thoughts, okay? It's, it's something that is running in your mind. And I need to change my camera battery. I'll be right back. So I spoke about you not... You are not your thoughts. It's something that is running in your mind. And the more you are 
able to witness them, the more you are able to create some distance to them. What I mean by that is once you start developing more of an awareness of what's going on there and you can be in this role of the observer, the less you start to believe them, the less you are emotionally caught up in them. Um, it's very, very important for you to start developing that quality to become a bit of an observer. Because it allows you to emotionally... Basically, not every single time that you have a thought coming up when it comes to what you can do, what you're capable of, and you notice, okay, that's actually not coming from me, that's coming from a situation from 10 years ago or three years ago when uh, um, that person said, made that comment towards, to me, towards me and I internalized that. The moment you start to understand it like this, that this kind of thought is basically just an echo of someone else's opinion of you from the past, you can start to take different kind of actions that are not grounded in that anymore. Where you are, and this is where the enchanter comes in, where you are in this position to create your own life. Okay, it's in your, it's in your hands. You have this position of empowerment, of being this powerful creator. And what you're creating and the life that you're living, your sole mission that you're here to fulfill, that you're here to build on for all of us, you can do this. But you can only do this if you believe in yourself and if you believe that you can do this. And there's nothing that I could possibly say to make you believe in yourself. It's something that has to come from within you. Wonderfully though, there are a lot of ways to start building this self-belief and this self-trust. With this enchanter here, I'm also being called to let you know for the kind of dreams that you have and the kind of career change that you want to make. When you notice that people have these kind of projections towards yourself, please keep them a bit more private for now. Don't necessarily share them with everybody. Because you are in a stage where you are quite vulnerable and sharing things when you are not fully ready and not fully convinced that you can do it is basically leaving the door open for even more doubt to creep in. You know, if you know that they're not going to be supportive, maybe keep it to yourself for now. That's not to say that healthy criticism or healthy concerns are not to be taken into consideration. Of course they are, but I'm sure you know what I mean, where the difference is, because you can create that. You are this magician. And remember how in the beginning I said that you ha you're afraid of this kind of reflection, what has been reflected back to you. And with the copper, I also spoke about how... Um, you know, there needs to be a bit of a cleanup uh, so that you can see all of the magic that's that's underneath, like all of this beautiful warmth, all of this sh light shining. That's, that's this card of the enchanter, like that's who you are actually. You believe yourself to be this kind of two of, two of challenges here, this kind of wonky, distorted reflection of who you are, when in reality you are this enchanter. And with the wide world, they're speaking about perspective, because in this particular deck, this white heart um, is bringing you into this journey of the enchanted forest. And the full card in this deck is 
the white heart standing at the edge of the forest leading us into the forest and we are supposed to follow him in to find our way through with like all of its wonky paths and trails and all of the distractions in there all the adventures that await but you see here he's out there that's the card of the white world and you see for once you can see clearly for once there are no trees blocking your vision you can see far and wide you have the rolling hills ahead of you the path is clear it's free and you can go in the context of your reading this card speaks about opening your perspective of allowing yourself to view yourself in a different light and to start viewing these kind of dreams that you're having as possible to achieve. You see, you're not getting these kinds of information or these kind of downloads or these kind of inspirations just so that you can run against the wall and hit your face. It's not some kind of cruel joke that the universe plays on you to try and bring you suffering. The rare reason that you are getting this kind of visions is because it is possible for you to achieve. It is a glimpse of your potential, if you will. It is possible for you to do. So start changing your perspective a bit. Start opening up your vision a little bit to recognize this possibility. Remember also when I said that it is there are many different ways to start believing in yourself and building this kind of self-trust. I will leave one resource down in the description box for you, which is an EFT tapping session, which was not done by me, but by someone um, who has a huge catalog here on YouTube. His name is Tap with Bread. Um, and I will leave one down there for you. EFT tapping can be very beneficial because it allows you to release the emotional charge that you have surrounding either a limiting belief or some kind of memory or just the emotion itself that is present somewhere in your system. And it allows you to release this kind of negative emotional charge. So that then, you know, when someone says something uh, that reminds you of back then, for example, you are no longer triggered, no longer has the same emotional response that arises within you, which means it has no effect on you anymore. And bit by bit, you can start releasing and releasing and building up the new. Um, for you as well... <clears throat> For you as well, I will leave another tapping video down below for you, which is basically allowing yourself to feel more powerful. It's one that I created. And I would also highly encourage you to watch out for the Reiki-infused affirmation track that I'm going to upload. More on that at the end of your reading, but just so you know, I haven't forgotten about this. And I will leave some resources in the description box for you. So you can start uh, unraveling that a bit. The last thing I want to do is actually read from the Venusian Galactic Council reading. Venusian Galactic Council, star being guides, answer the call, time to shine. The Venusians are advanced cosmic beings similar to angels who come from the planet Venus. They are our starry ancestors and are dedicated to helping us experience and embody divine love. There are millions of them, and many of us will have them working with us as guides. If you feel drawn to this information or strongly connected to the stars or star people, there's a good chance that there are many extraterrestrial beings around you at this time, many of whom will be connected to the Venusian Galactic Council. Governed by Lady Venus and Sanat Kumara, the Venusian Galactic Council is a divine board of directors who are responsible for recruiting light workers and leaders on Earth who have the potential to make a huge difference by following the call of their soul. 
when they come to us, it's an honor and an opportunity to be reminded of a connection that was active before we came into this incarnation. There is no set way of working with the Venusians, but they will contact us in dreams or meditation to share information that will support us on our journey. They often send spiritual downloads and thought forms or understandings, dreams about flying or being in space or other ways in which they will come through to us. Connect. On a bright starry night sky, say, on a bright starry night, say, Venusian Galactic Council, thank you for helping me answer the call of my soul. Your message. This is a call to action. You are being asked to step up and create the changes you want to see in the world. You have a reason for being here, and you have the potential to inspire, support, and heal your corner of the world. Don't let this information scare you or overwhelm you, for you are being prepared energetically to step into this role. The ideas you have been having recently are divine downloads, but you aren't being called to make dramatic changes in your life, simply to move forward step by step. <laughs> the Venusian Galactic Council will reveal more information to support you. Be aware of downloads of information and spiritual signs, for they are confirmation that you are on the right path. <laughs> Listen, the only reason I'm laughing is because I said that. <laughs> I said that in your reading, I spoke about the synchronicity and you're fearing that you're making it up. I spoke about how this like career change, it's not a dramatic shift in the sense of I need to quit my job tomorrow. It's more like step by step following these little breadcrumbs. So, and they also touched on the dream time. So I guess we have the source of these kind of downloads that I spoke of where I said, it's partly your, your higher self and partly the universe communicating with you, and now we have the Venusian Galactic Council. Um, I also feel called to let you know or to encourage you if you want to connect more deeply with them. Hop on YouTube, which is great because you are already there if you're watching this right now, and look for a guided meditation to connecting more with the Venusians or with the Venusian Galactic Council. Look for a guided meditation there. I am not putting one down in the description box for you because there are probably different ones and different ones will resonate with different people, different views, different individuals of the pile number of ones. All right. So I feel like I need to leave the reading here. That's all, all the information you need for the moment from the Hawk Spirit. That's it. I will say that there are three additional resources connected to this topic coming your way. The first one is an EFT tapping session to release uncomfortable thoughts, memories, and emotions surrounding this topic of taking risks. The second one is going to be a Reiki-infused affirmation track about 10 minutes long, maximum, I think probably 10, uh, also about enhancing this, this quality of being courageous to take risks and believing in yourself, which is why I said please listen to that when it comes out. Um, and the third resource is going to be a 30-minute Usui Reiki treatment to support this kind of healing process surrounding taking risks and feeling courageous enough to step into this new if they're out already, you will find them in the pinned comment down below. And if not, they're coming later out this week. And my beautiful pile number ones, that's the reading that I have for you today. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye. If you felt drawn to the hawk and the thistle, then welcome. Welcome to your reading, my beautiful pile number twos. And we're actually going to start this reading off by reading from the guidebook. Because you see each of the groups that you had, all of the piles, each of these hawk cards is a representation of a different kind of facet of the hawk's bird and taking risks, you know, it's like a slightly different angle to this energy. So let's see what yours is all about. So we got the hawk and thistle with the meaning of graceful persistence. 
The hawk is a keen and vigilant observer, so much so that watchful and hawk-eyed have become synonyms. An apex predator, the hawk glides gracefully on the wind, its sharp talons ever at the ready. The thistle can thrive in a ver variety of environments, from verdant hills to rocky shores. Its spiked, stinging leaves protect its radiant flower, which perches like a crown upon its stem. Upright, you can act fiercely while maintaining your grace and dignity. Sharpen your talons, but don't lose your crown. Reverse, external pressures have weakened your resolve. Remember your worth and guard it closely. And then there are two questions to reflect on. Am I too easily influenced by my environment? And how can I thrive in a difficult situation? So we're going to see how this plays out in your reading. By the way, side note, I had to read that like three times because it's dark in here. <laughs> and I don't know where my glasses are, so I missed this short text up three times. But <laughs> it's beside the point. Um, overall for your reading, so this is the, this is the energy, this is the spirit the, and the hawk spirit that we're dealing with, we're going to look at, on this side, what is basically keeping you from taking that kind of risk. We're also going to look at the topic of your risk, of course, like what is this about? And then on this side, we're going to look more on the side of how you can overcome this fear of taking this risk. And then I'm also, I also got a gateway basically for you to walk through. That's a card that I pulled. All right, let me pull a couple of cards. Um, first of all, we're going to stay on this side. So we're going to look at what is holding you back from taking risk first. And the first card that we have for you is vinegar. Okay, that's interesting. Let's see. And then I pulled... So I asked for three and you got five, so we're going to take the five. It's basically the story that's connected to why you are afraid of taking this risk, right? So we have the white heart. If my camera wants to focus. Um, we have for you the seven of challenges. We have the Nine of Spells. Focus, please. All right, and here we go. <laughs> it took a while to focus, but this is the Nine of Spells. I just really thought you should see that card. Uh, then we have the Ten of Boons here. And then we have the Three of Spells. Interesting. Okay, so I feel like you are afraid of taking risks in your life based on a couple of past memories, but there is one in particular that wants to come through for you. Um, the reason that I'm saying that is because of the vinegar card and the kind of journey that is depicted here. So with the vinegar card, this card speaks about, I mean, it also speaks about memory, but it more specifically speaks about when I say about the, say the word vinegar, that vinegar is, has such a potent kind of uh, taste that just saying that word like vinegar or thinking of vinegar can evoke this kind of sensation in your mouth, you know, the <laughs> happening for me right now, um, you know, where you start to uh, salivate a little bit more because, you know, you got this kind of sour taste of vinegar on your on your tongue. And vinegar is something that because we have this kind of strong reaction to it it's something that needs to be used in moderation or more so to be used in the right balance with everything else and because we have this kind of memory this this like vinegar card is 
connected to the topic of memory and when it comes to being in balance or not in balance, you know, when something tastes too sour um, or, yeah, when something tastes too sour, the, the balance is off and I'm, I'm getting this kind of like sour, sour taste in my mouth when it comes to that kind of memory. Let me wait a second because all of the dorks are barking right now. All right, they stopped. So with vinegar, like I said, I'm getting this kind of like sour, sour taste in my mouth and the word memory. So your fear of taking risks is connected to a specific, a specific memory. And I'm hearing for some of you, this is connected to some past lives that you have lived, but not for all of you, but I feel like for the majority of you, there is a specific past life connection here. Um, and I'm very intrigued with like the white heart, which is basically the full card that is bringing you on this, on this new journey. And this new journey is like, it's twofold. On the one hand, it's the new journey of being incarnated again here on, on earth and having this new kind of life and then having this experience. But because of all of this like magical mist surrounding it as well, I feel like I just heard the words like past life, past life connection. And with the past life connection, I'm being, I'm being drawn to the seven of challenges and the nine of spells here. And with the seven of challenges, there is this uh, feeling of um, can it please focus? Yes. Of your belongings and something important being stolen from you in this life. Like, you know, in the middle of the night, you see these people here, they are sleeping very, very, um, safely, or they feel very safe as they're sleeping and, uh, they got their cozy home there and, you know, they're just taking a rest. And as they're resting and feeling fine about where they are, the foxes came and stole parts of their belongings, parts of their favorite belongings, even even that much, you know? So it's not just some random stuff that was around, but it's their favorite possessions that were stolen. And I feel like there is um, almost a bit like a... like the energy of a chase here. And how can I put this in words? Okay, my guide said to go into the the like story of the of the tarot deck. So, the white heart here. You see, he's standing at the at the end of the forest, and he's beckoning us to follow him into this enchanted journey. So this is kind of like the the new journey, and along this this journey into this enchanted forest, there are so many adventures awaiting, so many different things to discover, to experience, etc. So this is number one. Then we have. Um, Basically, you've been in the forest for a while and you've taken time for rest. You've just, you've rested a bit. And as you rested there, something got taken from you. Something very dear to your heart got taken from you and from your safe place nonetheless, right? Because we see the fire here and the coziness and the safe, the safe place, like in the middle of this like dark and enchanted kind of forest. You see that here, like all of the fog that's around. So, uh, you know, you thought you were safe and something got stolen from you. After that, after you've woken up, you've basically tried to find them again. You find, you try to find what you were, what you were losing and you were almost like overrun by foxes. Like there was more of this kind of energy around you. And you see that here. Um, when you look very closely at this card, hopefully my camera... Please focus, honey. So basically, when you look at this card, you see that there is kind of a scary background there, right? There are uh, and that's also what this card speaks of. It speaks of all of these fears and dangers that are in the midst of the forest, like at night, about how this powerful witch is going into the forest regardless, because she's not afraid of it. She knows how to protect herself, how to protect her energy, and therefore she can go wherever she pleases. Because she knows that she can handle it, she knows she will be fine, she will be safe. So after this kind of 
journey through this very dangerous part of the forest by themselves or by yourself uh, with like trying to protect yourself as best as you could have you ended up in the Ten of Boons, which is a depiction of meeting a group of people as you are, basically. You're the wanderer, you have been a bit lost and you're doing okay, but you would like to you would like to reconnect, you would like to find a new community that you're connecting with, that uh, resonates with you, where you can feel at home. And you end up meeting these people here that you can see sitting at the table here. And they're inviting you in, not just as a guest, but basically immediately adopting you as one of their own. You see the dog underneath the table, which is a symbol of loyalty, and there is this feeling of abundance and prosperity present here in this, in this um, get-together, in this gathering, if you will. And we end this off... This little journey, we end this off with the Three of Spells, which is basically, once again, you going into the forest to try and create some magic and sending... I don't know why my camera just does not want to focus today. Um, is Once again, you are in the dark forest and you are trying to send new wishes, new intentions along the way. And you see how these wishes are... Um, escorted by these spirits right so these are like protected kind of wishes and because i said and i spoke about a past lifetime i would actually like to pull one more card for you from a different deck that i don't have next to my desk right now i will hold hold on for a second i will pull it because you see i did not expect your reading or any of the readings to go into past life territory today <laughs> but i want to see what kind of connection we can find here so so my beautiful hawksbird what kind of past life connection can you show us for our pile number twos please okay the first one that came out what kind of past life connection can you share with us, please? What's going on here? Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Let's see, you see how a lot of them fell out. So the first one that came out is Portal, Doors Are Opening, You Decide, Rewards, and a Wild Card. But this is connected more to Doors Are Opening. Portal, Doors Are Opening. There is something significant about this period of time right now for you when these kinds of memories are starting to resurface. Um, I'm sorry, was at the back of the deck. We had... Feather back. Then we have Whale and Orca Elders. Share your song, Frequency of Sound, Diving Deep. We have Cracked Open, Rock Bottom, Surrender to the Alchemy of Life. I wanted to show this card. And then we have Star Family. Mm. You're part of a team of souls, call and support. Right, let me show you. Also, I'm sorry that my camera is moving a bit. It's because I need to touch on my screen to focus on each individual card. For your, just for your reading, the others were fine. I don't know what's going on there, but we're gonna take it, okay? Star Family, you're part of a team of souls, call and support, and I... I feel like this kind of past life, um, this kind of past life memory goes back to your soul origin. Goes back to your soul origin. So that's like a very, very, very deep kind of trauma and memory connected to 
connected to that of this kind of soul journey. And I feel like, remember how I said like things were stolen from you and then you you were like on a move? I, I feel like you... I feel like a lot of you are star seeds and you have been at some point in your soul journey have been caught up in in some kind of war where the resources of your planet have been depleted and you needed to you needed to move you needed to move i'm not necessarily getting a specific lineage that I could give you a name for because there are several connected to that and several that I know of as well, but um, none ca not, not, nothing comes through like directly except if you watched my fear of being seen pick a card reading a couple of weeks ago and me saying that, if you watch that, you already know that this is you. <laughs> I, I sense your energy here. That's why I said that. But again, this is like a broader, on a broader scale, this kind of, uh, yeah, like depletion of, of resources, destruction going all the way almost to like destruction of, pla of your planet um, and being in a position where you needed to defend yourself, you needed to fend for yourself, because you see like before as well, there was a home there and more than one person and then you were on your own and basically trying to trying to escape, trying to find your way out of the danger, uh, finding a safe place. So it's like a different kind of planet, di different kind of collected that took you in um, and welcomed you there. But again, it wasn't really your home, right? So there was this wish sent out uh, that you sent out and that you wanted to at some point reconnect fully with your star family with your soul family and um the last card that i had here that i pulled from the bottom of the deck was i'm sorry defenseless <laughs> i am sorry <laughs> i'm sorry defenselessness writing past wrongs and undoing uprooting i said undoing right it says uprooting undoing writing past wrongs undoing we're gonna run with undoing here because yeah, it came through, but with a defenselessness, there is this, um, hmm. Memory, writing past wrongs, undoing, undoing this kind of damage, undoing this kind of damage. That's what they're what they're bringing through right now, defenselessness as well. It's like, um, I mean, listen here in this in this like seven seven of challenges, the people in their trailer they are sleeping, and I mean, when you're sleeping, you are in a very 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 vulnerable position, right? Um, and I feel like from a soul perspective, the kind of collective that you are coming from or the, the kind of energy of the planet that you're coming from from a soul perspective is rather high vibrational and rather pure meaning that prior to this kind of event you have not known war you have not known this kind of discord you have not known someone else needing to come in and taking resources because of you all you've known was abundance and because it was something that you've never experienced before, there was never a need for you to develop specific kind of defense mechanisms and develop that kind of technology. And because of that, you didn't have it. So it was like this, like, you know, you were sleeping, basically. You were sleeping, they came in, they could take whatever they wanted, almost. That's the kind of energy feeling that comes with it. And this, like, three of spells, like I said, is, like, you sending out these kind of wishes that, like, one day um, your soul collective comes back together and you can rebuild parts of what you had back then in the now, like, parts of what you had in this lifetime, like, parts of this, these structures of society, etc. There's something there when it comes to this, um, that's very, very interesting. And with like this defenselessness and like writing past wrongs and undoing, you've learned a lot. You've learned a lot, you've grown a lot. 
but there is this memory that is connected to this fear of taking risks that, that wants to be looked at. And I just heard some of you say, but how? <laughs> I will share a little bit more about that with you a bit later, but also I want you to know that you got the portal card, doors are opening. It's less of a it's less of an active effort that is involved from your end here. Um, to receive the kind of information that you need. What I mean by that is the time is right for you to receive this kind of information. The time is right for you to have this kind of experience, to have this memory returning to you because you're ready for it. And because you're ready for it, this kind of memory, the door will open whether you are trying to speed up the process or not. It's going to happen. Like You're, you're going to know. And this will is also something that can come in different, come to you in different kind of forms, this kind of information. But I think we will speak about that uh, a bit later. Let me actually keep this here for now. This is super interesting to me. Um, of the past life, because the past life is, is like, it's very loud. Because remember in the beginning, I said that not all of you have this past life connection, but um, I feel like the majority of you do. And I feel like for those of you who do not have that kind of past life connection, this kind of energy pattern that I spoke of, of, of all of the resources being there, like feeling so safe and secure and being basically defenseless and then someone coming in and taking it from you and you're being out on your own. This kind of like betrayal energy is something that can play out also in your lifetime here with the kinds of relationships that you've had. Perhaps you've had a business partner that you trusted a lot that then uh, ended up stabbing you in the back and taking everything from you. And you're, you know, like going out and trying to find a new community, but sending out this kind of wish, you know, the kind of energy, this like past life energy that I spoke of does not need to be only present in your past life. Usually when there is such a deep kind of memory or such a deep wound that's happened whenever, whenever in your soul journey, this kind of energy pattern repeats itself in different lifetimes. So, you know, it's kind of the same energy pattern, the same pattern of events playing out on a smaller scale where it's not losing the planet. Um, you know, it could be losing con your country to war. It could be uh, just dysfunctional family system. I say just, you know, like all of these are awful. But it could also be having a dysfunctional kind of family unit and uh, you being the one with your pure energy that people try to steal from and then you're out on your own, try to fend, your, fend for yourself in this kind of crazy energy to uh, moving away from them or in some capacity being able to step outside of this dysfunctional um, environment and finding people that have taken you in basically your chosen family in this lifetime but secretly still having this kind of wish which I get I understand you know to bring some kind of stronger community in you know so even if I speak about the past life and I say it's not the case for them for for some of you the kind of energy pattern is still something that has played out in your life and that caused this kind of memory, you know? Um, but again, it's likely that for those of you that have this kind of past life memory, that this kind of energy pattern played out in this lifetime already for you as well, you know? So it's like, it's a, it's a fresh and it's an old memory simultaneously. All right, let us look. That's super interesting. I did not expect your reading to go into this direction whatsoever today. I can tell you that much. Um, <laughs> let's look a bit at the topic of the risk that you're ready to take. Next. So we have the topic of career. We have animals. We have dreams, yeah, and we have boundaries. Boundaries was at the bottom of the deck, but I felt like I needed to take it. Mm. Let me... Leave. 
leave this underneath here for now. Um, regarding the dreams, this kind of portal um, to your, this like past life kind of, this past life memory, you can receive messages through dreams, but you may also revisit this kind of memory in your dreams. I will actually leave one resource in the description box for you to, it's not a, it's not necessarily dream inducing, but it is a sleep hypnosis or it is a hypnosis type of meditation that you can do to reconnect with that memory. A word of caution when I say this, however, this kind of memory, depending on how you're feeling, you may want to revisit that by going to a practitioner that does past life regressions, okay? So uh, tread carefully if you're feeling really scared of what you might find, of what you might see, and you are in a mental space at the moment where you feel like it might be too much for you to handle, first of all, back off. You don't need to do that now. Like I said, this door is opening when the time is right, like it's going to happen regardless of your active effort or not. But if you are in a place where you feel a bit scared, but you would like to be guided through that, again, find a practitioner that you can connect with, that you can go to. If you feel okay with it and you feel like you got the tools to handle it, you can also start doing some inquiry. But I will also say, regardless of whether or not you go to a practitioner or you go to that place uh, through a guided YouTube meditation, guided, hyp guided hypnosis through YouTube, trust that whatever will come up for you, you will be able to manage it. What I mean by that is the kind of information that comes through to you is filtered also by your higher self. So there will not be something coming up for you that is going to be of such a nature that you cannot simply handle it. All right. But I just wanted to put that word of caution out there because, you know, we all have different capacities and all of these things fluctuate as well. So don't stress about it. You don't have to go, go looking for it. But if you do, I'm going to leave something down below for you. Um, and yeah, so through dream time, that's, that's where you are revisiting that as well. And with the boundaries, I'm being drawn back to this feeling of defenselessness, of how you, how you didn't know that there were these kinds of energies, that there, that there were these kinds of people uh, present that would just take from you because they want to because they want your resources, you know, because they hadn't learned how to uh, take care of their own. So they needed to take someone else. And I feel like also from an energy perspective, that's part of your, of your, one of your soul lessons in this lifetime as you are here on this planet is to learn the art of nurturing your own energy, replenishing your own energy, and also allowing other people the same space to do that for themselves. And I don't mean by saying that, I don't mean that you are clingy in any way. It's more so that you have so much energy and you have so much to give that there has been a pattern of people taking advantage of that, people taking more energy off of you than um, they were contributing to your own energy to replenish it, right? So basically like draining you is what I want to say here. And you are learning that it's, or you have learned that it's not your job to do that for others and others are responsible to do that for themselves. And you are learning like a big soul lesson of yourself in this lifetime is to learn how to set these kind of boundaries and to give others the space to discover how to replenish, how to nourish themselves and nurture themselves. Because you also had to learn that. All right, um, and with the career and the animals, this risk that you want to take is for you to be more visible on the kind of work that you're doing. In a, and, and like I feel like the, the animals that we have here there is this feeling of taking care of others who cannot advocate verbally for themselves. 
when I say that who cannot advocate verbally for themselves, that could be animals, yes, but not necessarily. It could also be um, the landscape, it could be uh, an environmental impact, but it could also be, for example, children, you know? So anything that has that doesn't have the same capacity to verbally advocate for themselves in the way that you and I can right now through speaking um, could also, by the way, be connected to minorities and people who, even if they do raise their voice, are overlooked in our societies, you know? So any any kinds of, of groups of people like this as well, um, people who feel like they, they, they don't have... They, even if they raise their voice, it's not going to be heard. That kind of energy is what your career is centered around and you being more visible in doing this kind of work. And you are so passionate about that because of your own experiences, because of this memory that, uh, that formerly came through. But you see, the thing is, and we're coming back to you learning how to nourish yourself, nurture yourself, and giving others the grace to learn that themselves. When you are more vocal about your ideas, about your ideals as well, and how things could change, and you advocating for others, there is an underlying fear that, first of all, there's almost a bit of guilt that you yourself are doing so well when they are not if you are someone who's working with, with people, um, there's this, this fear and guilt when it comes to this. And secondly, you are afraid that once again, when you are so visible and doing so well, that others will come and take from you. And this is an integral part here, like others will come and take from you if you are doing too well. As a fear itself, that's something that needs to be looked at. That's something that needs to be that needs to be resolved. Um, I'm going to leave. I think I will. I think I have a, an EFT tapping session that I didn't record, but someone else recorded. I think I have something in my list. I'm gonna look it up. If I have it, I'm gonna put it in the description box for you as well as an extra resource for you to do. All right, but that's that's what this kind of risk is connected to you. Um, going after this kind of dream career and sharing, sharing your voice, using your voice. It's also with these kind of boundaries, it's not only the boundaries that you set for yourself, but also you're setting boundaries. Um, how can I say that? You're advocating for others, right? And you're trying to set boundaries for others who are in a position where, again, either they, they can't verbalize these boundaries themselves or uh, even if they do, they're not taken seriously, they're overlooked, they're overheard. So we got this kind of activist energy that's present here. And that's the risk that you're ready to take. And you see here with like whale and orca elders, we have Shaggy song, Frequency of Sound, Diving Deep. Because that's the thing, because of the soul history that you've had. Even when it comes to the people who took from you or what you're witnessing now, like the people taking from others and what you've also experienced in this lifetime, people taking from you, because of your long history with this kind of energy pattern and, and like learning the ins and outs and um, all the different kinds of angles from observing this over and over and over and over again and being in the cycle, you have learned why others are doing that in the first place and what they are themselves lacking. You know, so your knowledge when it comes to this goes very, very deep. And it goes far beyond um, being outraged and pointing fingers is what I want to say here, okay? You have a very, very deep understanding of both sides of this kind of equation, of this kind of coin, of this energy pattern. And because of that, when you start to share your voice, it's going to hit. It's going to hit a lot. 
and maybe it's something that you've even noticed in the past when you yourself have been caught in this kind of energy pattern in your life and you've met these kind of people if you have conversations with them that's why they wanted to take from you in the first place as well because you are hitting so deep like when you share when you speak you can hit so very deep because you see you always see and you don't see with your two physical eyes but you see in terms of energy whether that's conscious for you or subconscious but but you always know and that scares a lot of people. And that's why there was this feeling of I need to take from you because you see the thing is if they themselves had the kind of power that you have, they know they would misuse it. There was this fear of when you are using your voice and be in your full strength, you would treat them the same way that they would treat you if they had that kind of power, right? So there, there was this active effort of trying to keep you small and trying to keep you um, out of this kind of powerful state because they were fearing this kind of retribution. And I say that because like they, they are looking at things from a surface level. I know that even if you had this full power that they would fear, I know that you would not use it to hurt the others in the same way because you you are way too intelligent for that. Like your emotional intelligence is way too way too strong for that, way too high for that. Because like I said, you see all the ki all the different sides of this story. All right, it's like hurt people, hurt people. You would find a different solution for it that would not be founded and grounded in oppression. And because of that, this kind of like past memory is coming up for you to heal now because in order for you to access this kind of full power and this full vision, because with this full vision as well in your soul history come the kinds of lessons that you have already learned, the knowledge of how things could have been done differently, um, as well as when you were out of your body again, being able to see different kind of timelines and how things played out if when you made different choices. You know, so it's like very multi-layered for you, this kind of knowledge that you had. It's basically you have the knowledge of standing at the same crossroad and um, knowing exactly how each of the of the six other streets that you could have taken, all of the six turns that you could have taken, how they played out. You have the kind of knowledge within you when it comes to this. And you need to release the emotional charge and, and this kind of like trauma in order for you to access this kind of full power and full wisdom so that you can use your voice in the way that you can. That's really, really interesting. I absolutely love that. Um, let's have a look at... Let's have a look at... Let me actually leave the animals up here. Let's have a look at... Um, ways that you can overcome this. I know this has been a, a longer reading than I also anticipated, but you know, sometimes it just is like that. <laughs> and I feel like it's necessary. It's necessary. All right, so we have for you, wow, okay, we have the card of the moon. I say wow, because the moon stands for the subconscious, stands for the mystery, but we also had the moon here, right? In the dream card, the full moon is present here. The full moon is present here as well. This also speaks about intuition. Like, let your intuition guide you how to overcome this fear intuitively. Mm. And then we have the five of spells. Allow yourself to try it out, like trial and error. Practice makes perfect. That's what I just heard. Practice makes perfect. Um, we have the five of challenges. <clears throat> yeah, this is the this is the like past resentment, and then not like this, and then we have the child of spells. Oh, that's so interesting. So we got with Moon like very clearly the intuition and you see how also in the Moon card there's like all of the space surrounding it and I'm really being drawn to this kind of space like allow your 
intuition to guide you when you are uncovering that kind of memory like I said like I will leave one resource down below that you can try out but trust your intuition if you feel like you can't do it by yourself you can do it by yourself if you feel like you would benefit from a practitioner to help you through go find a practitioner you know and if you feel intuitively like okay I'm open to receiving that and I don't want to put any active effort into that then trust that whatever you need to know will be revealed to you you know this is like, I can't give you more information than that. Then like, ask yourself, <laughs> ask your intuition, how, how, how can you work with this kind of memory? How can you work with that? With five of spells, like practice makes perfect. This is about learning how to properly use your voice, okay? You don't need to have it all figured out perfectly from the beginning. This is about practice. When you look at the card as well, you see that they are, they like apprentices the magical apprentices that are trying out and testing the different kind of spells you see one is a full frog one is kind of a half frog etc and it's literally this feeling of practice makes perfect you don't need to have everything figured out it doesn't need to be perfect you just start where you are and take one step forward and you continue through that with the five of challenges here this speaks about this kind of resentment um yeah, it's, it's this resentment, it's this past kind of energy, the resentment, all of these emotions connected to it, the emotions. And didn't we also have down here, one card spoke about uprooting. Yeah, uprooting. Because I feel this is really interesting because you see he's uprooted a tree and we got uprooting here with I'm sorry and the defenselessness. There is an energy here for, or a call, let's not say a call. There is an opportunity here for you to practice some forgiveness whenever you're ready. Okay, this does not need to be now. It does not need to be in 10 years even. It's just an opportunity that you can take to heal because it can be very healing. But again, up to you. Up to you whenever you're ready. There's going to be available for you but for now you can focus on releasing this kind of resentment releasing these kinds of challenging emotions connected to that and with the child of spells here again we have someone practicing magic you know in that instance the child took the wizard staff of their teacher and they went into the forest and just you know they, they give it a go they're just giving it a go. You see down here the bunny who is not really worried because it's like the child doesn't really know what they're doing just yet. They're just, just, just trying it out. And it's this kind of like childlike innocence and enthusiasm of just giving things a try. Just just trying it out, you know? Like, let's see what happens. Like, you know, maybe it's going to work. Maybe it's not going to work. But I can try. And I can try again. I'm going to get it right. I'm in the process of learning. Like trying things means that you are in the process of learning something. Like learning, learning how to do that. Because I will also say that you learning how to release this kind of memory or release uh, this kind of energy pattern. There is something here about you learning that that is connected to your career in the sense of the people who feel like they can't advocate for themselves they themselves have experienced a similar kind of energy pattern in their life where they were made to believe that they were powerless and they ran up against people circumstances uh, perhaps societal structures etc where they had the same kind of energy pattern. So you learning how to resolve that within yourself means that you can be um, not only a great advocate for them, for those people, but it also means that you can take on a bit of a role as a guide for them, you know, to help them find their power, to reconnect with their own power and their own strength and to overcome this fear of trying things and having this kind of hope that maybe it could work. Because I feel like hope is a big, big aspect here as well. Like hoping for the best, hoping that things will work. 
Okay, this they told me to just I say they I mean my guides told me to move on to the last cards. Um let me put the child of spells up here. I feel like he belongs here. And the last one makes me laugh as well because I asked for one card and I got three for you. You got so many more cards, but whatever. So we have Shambhala initiations, retreating to recharge, trusting in the process, and Dharma. So with Dharma, we got life path. Yeah. Dharma, life path. And like Shambhala as well. This is, um, it's said to be an energy space, like an energetic kind of retreat center that is in the Himalayan mountains that you can go to, you can visit to, not in a physical form necessarily. People have looked for it, but didn't find it. But it is said that it is a space that exists in a different kind of dimension that we can visit in spirit and we can go there to retreat, recharge, to learn. And then we have, oh my God, <laughs> Temple of Truth, Throat Chakra, Authenticity, Self-Expression. Which brings me back to this Orca and Elder card. We spoke about your your voice, your authenticity, your intuition there, um, your self-expression. Throat chakra is something that you can also do a couple of meditations about, like some clearings. I'm going to, I think I'm going to leave one down below for you in the description box as well. And then we have Merkaba, activation. Transcendence, ascensions, ascension, you are rising up. And it is the same kind of energy that I get from uh, the like Merkaba activation. It's the same kind of energy that I'm getting from the portal card. It's like it's happening. Like it is happening. It is part of this ascension process. Like you are rising up in, in consciousness. Like you are allowing yourself to develop this broader perspective on on yourself, on your life on the universe it's like a really again like this portal it's it's a big one like connecting to that kind of memory it changes it's going to change your outlook on everything and that's the risk here like being willing to see being willing to trust your intuition being willing to step forward in that way Okay, the only last thing they want me to say is with Shambhala, if you're interested in that, you can find, you can go, I mean, you are on YouTube, you can look to see if you can find a specific meditation, a guided meditation to go there to Shambhala. Okay, I just heard that's it. So those are the messages that the Hawk Spirit has for you when it comes to the risk that you're ready to take. And preparing yourself for taking that risk more and more. All right, there are three additional resources coming your way connected to this topic. The first one, the first one is going to be an EFT tapping session connected to releasing uncomfortable thoughts, memories, and feelings surrounding this topic of taking risks. The second one is going to be uh, are going to be Reiki infused affirmations. It's going to be an affirmation track about ten minutes long with affirmations to strengthen this quality of being courageous enough to take these kind of risks and believing in yourself. And the third one is going to be a 30-minute Usuya Reiki treatment. If those are out already, you'll find them in a pinned comment down below. And if they're not out yet, they're going to come later this week. Um, that's all I have for you today. Have a beautiful rest of your day, my dear, and I hope I see you soon again. Bye. If you felt drawn to this wonderful hawk drawing and pile number three, welcome, welcome to your reading, my lovelies. We're going to start this off by reading from the guidebook of the hawk. Um, because you see like the three depictions that you saw of the hawk all represent a slightly different facet of the hawk and the power quality of taking risks. So let's see what direction we are going in with your reading here. We have Hawk, watchful, all-seeing messenger of divinity. 
The sharp eyes of the hawk watch her every move. This keen-eyed bird has the ability to see every little detail as well as the bigger picture. When this card appears, fate has its eyes on you, and the winds are shifting. It is said that the hawk carries news upon its wings and is sent from divinity itself to deliver it. The message should not be taken lightly. Though it may seem small or insignificant, it will eventually redirect your course. When in balance, sees clearly intuitive. When out of balance, sees too much suspicious to bring into balance perspective shift. All right, let's have a look. <sighs> Just a couple of words on the structure of our reading for today. We're gonna look on the left side of the screen. We're gonna look at your fear of taking risks and why it's there, what the story connected to that is. On the right side, we're gonna look at the ways that you can overcome this fear and how you can resolve that. And we're of course also gonna talk a look at the topic of this risk. Like what risk are you actually ready to take? Which risk are you being prepared for at the moment? So let's have a look first on the left side. Ah. So for you, we have the card of smoke. Which is interesting to me because when I saw this card first, I thought about how when there's smoke, you, you can't see clearly, right? Smoke is something that clouds the vision. You can't, most of the time, you can't even, like, it's difficult to find the source depending on how close you are. You, it affects everything, right? Like smoke irritates your breath, irritates your eyes. It's something that is all-consuming almost in a way. I mean, you can also from the fumes of the smoke you can also get a lot of health um what's it called um it can hurt you <laughs> i don't know the words right now but it doesn't matter so we have the four of boons can you please focus here we go. Oh, we were so close for a second here. All right, so the Four of Boons. And this is basically, these cards are a depiction of the story of, of why you are afraid of taking this risk. We have the Seven of Spells. We got the Nine of Visions. And then we have the Ace of Visions. This was underneath the deck. It's a bottom deck energy, which is basically, um, it's describing the overarching, the overarching energy of this. I will also say, I find it interesting that you got the card of smoke and then you have a card that has like people, people like holding torches, you know? So you got the smoke and you also got the fire um, and the smoke card also speaks about this tendency that when something is burning or before start, something starts to burning, you can see you can see the smoke, right? The smoke is a visible sign that something is on fire and how as humans we have this tendency of instinctually speaking, running away from that, you know, uh, running away from this from this kind of smoke, from the kind of fire hazard. Uh, out of self-protection and it speaks about how the smoke can cloud your vision and how sometimes it's good to go towards the source of this of this smoke to find out what's going on underneath the surface and um, you know what's burning basically something is burning and so it's it, this like smoke card brings kind of a sense of urgency with it in the sense of you can't ignore things forever. And I feel like 
there's a connection here to the topic of your relationships and growing up in an environment where poverty was very present and like scarcity mindset was very present because of of this kind of poverty of people um, not being able to to share with others but it's like it goes beyond that it's not it's not even um not even an unwillingness to share with others it's it's a a pure like battle for survival you know it's not a it's a very unsupportive kind of energy that that is coming through here like i said like poverty poverty just just poverty is is a word that's coming through very strongly because also with these pies here and the four of boons in this particular deck that's this card i mean you see here are these these wives who have made all of the pies and they're trying to sell them but you know just the way that they are looking at you it's, it's like already already this feeling that you're not good enough you can't buy them anyway you can't you can't pay for the price anyway you know and because of that they're not they're not capable of selling their pies because they're basically um, everyone, they were basically rejecting everybody and this came out in reverse and it's, it's like I said, it's this kind of poverty, poverty mindset. I, I feel like you have been ostracized a lot as well. I feel like there's something very different about you in, in the sense of very different from the environment as well when you were growing up and when you went to school you were sticking out and you were sticking out very very strongly perhaps um, because you were living in an environment or a neighborhood or you went to school in a neighborhood where most of the kids were a bit more well off or like middle class etc and had more money than you and your family and because of that there was a a separation to you and, and you were looked at as the weird one because you I don't know didn't have the the clothes that they had access to or the other gadgets you couldn't participate in all of the activities that they that they participated in um, perhaps some of you are people of color and because that's one of the images that I'm seeing is is a person of color that is surrounded that's like in a, in a school environment and everyone else is white. That's one, one of the images that I'm seeing right now. And it's, it's literally like this kind of feeling of being surrounded by people that are... I don't I don't I, I, I'm lacking the words to describe this kind of energy. Because when I say that people are not friendly towards you, that's the, like a crass understatement. You know, that doesn't even hit it close. Like they, I can feel like some pure kind of hatred coming from others, some, some pure kind of hatred. And it's like the energy of being bullied relentlessly because you are different and you were different and others felt that very, very strongly. And there is this feeling of this is an energy that has been present in your life for a very, very long time. Like, even if you move to different places, like, the energy kept repeating itself. You know, this kind of pattern on, on some level kept repeating itself. Hmm. And... With this nine of visions here, there's this like tossing a coin in the wishing well. So there is a like wishing for yourself to be different. Look at the look at the image, the mirror image of the swan here, how there it looks like a regular swan, but if you look at it at the mirror reflection. And either the image that they were envisioning, meaning that you were envisioning, or the way that you saw yourself, is... Ah, come on, please focus. 
is this kind of crown swan. You see that there? It's like you've lost your hope for things to change, for things to be better, for things to be different. It's like you've been through this kind of situation with like the poverty and like being looked down upon. That's the, that's the word I was looking for beforehand as well. Being looked down upon and being ostracized and being bullied um, so much in your life. And you've, you've made like a thousand wishes, like more than a thousand wishes, more wishes than you could count. You've made wishes for things to change, for you to be different, for the world to be different. And there were times when you were hopeful, but you know, you moved and things kept repeating itself and repeating itself. And it's basically this feeling of being caught up in this kind of smoke and being surrounded by the smoke, like your entire life. And because of that, there is this, this fear of taking a specific kind of risk, a fear of moving forward. But again, with the smoke, it's like we need to go to the source. The smoke is just a symptom and the fire is the source. You know, the glowing embers are the source. So we need to go into the heat in order to resolve that. But understandably so, you, are, you have this, this fear of going into this kind of heat to resolve that. Because it's not, it's not just up to you, you know, like going into this heat to resolve that. It's not... Uh, it's not something you can do alone and by yourself and it's not up to your own willpower. It involves other people as well. And that makes things a lot more complicated. But that's what the sphere is, is, is connected to. So we got the fear of things repeating itself. And we also got the fear of... Not the fear, but we got the loss of hope. Let's have a look at your topic for a moment. I'm going to put this one up here for now. I'll also say like, I'm super sorry that this happened to you. This, because I also, I also feel your energy as a whole and I see how, or I can feel how misinterpreted you were or you are like your energy and, and what you're all about and like if I'm honest I'm getting a bit teary-eyed and it makes me want to cry because like you're lovely like you really are lovely and it breaks my heart to notice or to know that you were experiencing this you had to experience this Yeah. If I was there in person and you would like that, I would give you a massive hug right now, just so you know. Um, and then we would plot <laughs> the next part of your journey. But let's have a look at your topic. We got financial health. So it's basically um, the topic or the area that this taking risks is all about. So we got financial health. Um, we got commitment. We got friendship. And again, with friendship, I heard the words exclusion, like feeling ex excluded. Feeling excluded. Uh, we have manifestation, which brings me back to this wishing well and tossing the coins. And then uh, bottom deck energy, I felt like I needed to use uh, to take it as well, it was the card of trust. So we got a financial situation that is in the process of recovering, of returning back to a healthy status, to an abundant state. Bit by bit, returning to a returning to an abundant state. With the commitment and the friendship, there are two messages here. The first one, remember how I said I, I heard the words of exclusion, how you are excluded from 
these kinds of groups and and this come, came back to like the the seven of spells cards of where um the dragon here was surrounded by all of these gnomes and they were basically you know like m making wanting him to leave immediately there is a topic here of how can i say that there is this like taking risks this fear of taking risks is connected to your relationships and changing things moving forward however with this like recovering financial health there is a fear from your end when it comes to commitment and friendship that um because of the way that you have been treated in the past there is a fear that the people that are coming into your life and that you are drawing in are only interested in you because right now you are or now and going forward you are able to keep up with um for example, the expenses or the kinds of brands that they're that they're wearing, etc. You know, like the the techie gadgets, etc. There's this feeling of they are only interested in me because now I can keep up, and that's why I'm tolerated. And tolerated is a key word here as well. It's like tolerated, not accepted, not one of them. There's this feeling of exclusion. That's why we also got the commitment card here because there is this this um, fear of of a fear of this commitment but there's also when it comes to the other people the friendships etc the intimacy aspect of these kinds of relationships i say there is the fear present but also there is an opportunity for you to engage in new friendships and to you as we've seen with the energies that were present in the past rightfully so you are afraid of that because it feels like a huge risk it's like you've built yourself up you have found a way to um, create money to create a job environment etc that is suited to you and now you are focusing more on the social aspect on building your circle building a circle building your community and there is a uh, it, it feels like a huge risk to connect with other people and to share more vulnerable parts of yourself with other people because of your history and this is where this this like fear of others are only in it for the money ties back in right where it's like almost uh, i want to say like ugly duckling syndrome um but from a not necessarily from a physical perspective of you looking at yourself it's more so um, the way that you view yourself is distorted because there is still like some internalization of how people were treating you back then. You know, there 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 are some some self beliefs that are grounded in this this in these experiences that you still have when it comes to. Uh, friendships and relationships how like others can only be interested in you if you are of service to them somehow and you know back then you didn't have the financial aspect um or the financial background in order to fulfill that so people were not interested in you so it's like a very transactional way of thinking about relationships and friendships in particular um that is being broken open because you are being asked to commit to new friendship and to to connect and i also want to like share show this card a bit deeper to you because you see how these people are connecting with each other from the heart space so it's like a different kinds it's different kinds of connections it's not about um, the material aspects of anything it's it's about you and who you are as a person your personality your sense of humor your knowledge your wisdom your like the the kind of energy that you bring to the group just just you being there you know without the financial transaction aspect without um oh i could introduce you to um this person or that person and uh you know without this kind of this kind of transactional aspect it's just like pure unconditional love through friendship and with the manifestation and the trust, like you have been trying to manifest this for so long. Remember with the wishing well and like you tossing the coin and wishing for people like this and you have not met them over and over again. Like you are falling on your face like over and over again. And because of that, there is no hope and there is this 
this severe like distrust, but also this lack of hope. So this risk that that uh, the hawk spirit wants to speak about is about these new friendships that are coming into your life, that are forming into your life, and what the trust is as well. You've changed a lot. You had to change a lot in order to go from this kind of poverty energy that we saw in the beginning to be in this um, financially abundant state and to move deeper into this an ab financially abundant state of right at this moment you're not there no just from your energy perspective i can feel it which means in the physical it's only a matter of time when it shows up okay it's in your energy i see it it's there whether it's physically there right now for you to in your bank account or not know it's coming and, and like not just a little bit we're talking about quite a lot here we're talking about a lot of money here um and you're being asked to open your heart a little bit, to trust, to trust. And like I said, you changed your energy a lot already. Otherwise, this wouldn't be present either in your energy or already physically in your bank account. Um, and because you've changed so much, you also need to trust that the people that you are attracting towards yourself now also have a different kind of energy. Trust your intuition, trust yourself. We're going to look a little bit deeper into ways that you can release this kind of fear, but topic-wise that's what this is about. So I'm going to leave I'm going to leave the friendship up here. And I also want to have the wishing well out. Yeah, like that. So, the first card that we have for you is the card of the darkening. And then we have... Oh wait, not like this. <laughs> then we have the Enchanter's Wheel. We have the Six of Visions. And we have the Six of Spells. I absolutely love that for you because listen with a darkening card I know it can look a bit scary but it is actually a very positive card because this card speaks about going into the depth of who you are and accepting it all it speaks about knowing who you are what you're about what you want to create what you want to build what you want to have in your life and just, just just like this authenticity is the word that I'm, thank you I was looking for that one just this feeling of being fully and authentically yourself that's what this card speaks of so the fact that this is coming up as the number one way for you to move through this fear overcome this fear of, of taking this risk of uh, opening up and reconnecting with I say reconnecting but connecting with new people also tells me that naturally in order to try and fit in you are always trying to change yourself to some degree trying to adapt to some degree uh, which again no shade I I get it okay I get it it's 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 tough to be by yourself it's tough to feel so lonely um, so I understand where you were coming from back then. But you are being called to embrace your full authenticity and to embrace who you are. Because you see, you see the thing as well is 
if you just allow yourself to be and you are in your interaction with, interactions with others, you are fully and authentically yourself. There are two things happening here. The first one is you are showing someone else who you are, which means someone else gets the full picture and can then accurately assess who you are, what your energy is all about, and whether or not they feel cool with it, they want to explore more of your energy, they are vibing with you. You know, it's basically one way of opening the door almost, or it's not opening the door, it's more so... Um, <laughs> the image that, that my guys are showing me for that one right now, I'm laughing because they're showing me um, like a, a storefront. It's, it's a storefront and it's made of glass and you know, like, this is, this is who I am, this is what I got, this is what I can bring to the table, this is what I'm interested in, um, this is my sense of humor, I like doing that, um, I don't like doing this, for example, but I like this one, is great here, this one is in season right now, I'm super interested in that one, and you know, it's like, um, when it's out on display for others to see, they can decide whether or not they want to go in the store or not, you know what I mean? I'm not saying that you are a product at all okay that's not that's not what this is about at all because clearly you are not but i'm just uh they're sharing this picture with me so that i can describe it a bit more accurately it's it's like out for the world to see and then the world can decide whether or not they vibe with that and trust me when i say that there will be people that will vibe with you fully and those are the ones that you want in your life. Those are the people that want to connect with you from this kind of heart center. But in order for them to find you and to see you, you need to allow yourself to be seen. You need to allow yourself to open up a little bit. Um, the second hand, when you are sharing yourself so authentically and so fully and so openly, you're also giving others permission to do, to do the same because... As a matter of fact, there are a lot of people walking around who are hiding certain parts of themselves because they don't think that they are cool enough or no one will get it or it's something that they need to hide for one reason, reason or another. So overall, like you cannot connect as deeply as you want to clearly. I see that like there is this very, very deep yearning to develop these kinds of connections from this heart center, from one heart center to another, that you cannot develop those kinds of relationships if you yourself are closed off because someone else will be closed off as well. And you know, like, it's, it's scary to open yourself up to someone else, like no questions asked, whether that's a friendship or a romantic relationship or any other kind of uh, relationship, whatever. It's always scary. It's always scary for everybody. It's scary for everyone involved. But that's where the trust comes in. Like you need to trust that when you start sharing yourself in this way, you, because of the energy that you're putting out, the kind of energy that you're bringing back towards yourself will be people. So you will attract people that are matching your energy. People that are interested in having the same kind of soul uh, connections that you have that you want the same kind of like connecting through this open heart center. That's why this kind of opening up and saying like, this is who I am, this is me, take it or leave it. Take it or leave it. And that brings me back, I'm jumping straight to the end here with a six of spells, which is a card of saying congratulations. And when you look at this image, you see that there is this wizard here who has managed to hatch this little, this little wyvern, which is notoriously very difficult to do, right? So there's a kind of a rebirth happening here. And you see how all of these people are congratulating the wizards. All of these are other wizards and witches of very high ranks. And because they themselves are very high ranks, they understand the kind of attention and care and love that was needed in order to be able to hatch this wyvern. So these congratulations that they are offering this wizard are coming from a very pure place. There is no jealousy present here. 
So this speaks about this kind of purity that is present when you yourself are mirroring that. When you yourself are are fully engaged in in your own rebirth and um, allowing yourself, you know, like this little baby, this little newborn version of yourself, allowing this out there. And you see as well, like there are people coming to see this kind of newborn wyvern. Like allowing people to see this new version of you. Trust that kind of energy. And with the six of visions as well, like the six of visions uh, speaks about this magical time. You see how she's there, she's reading a book. But you see how there are, there are all of these other magical creatures around. She's not really paying attention to them because she's so enveloped by her book. And I want to let you know that there are a lot of signs and synchronicities all around you already. Like you see maybe some number sequences that are repeating. By the way, right now I'm looking at my watch and it just said 3311. So either one of these might be something that you are going to see more often going forward. You know, um, if you just pay attention, if you just look up from your books, you will start to see and notice that there are actually some changes happening in your life. At the same time, this card connects back to this feeling of hopelessness that was coming up in the beginning. Allow yourself to dream again. What kind of relationships would you want? What kind of dynamics would you want? What would you want to do with your new friends? What kind of topics would you want to talk about? What kind of conversations? What kind of energy, nurturing kind of energy would be present in those relationships? Allow yourself to dream a little bit about that again. And here with the Enchanter's Wheel, like it's it's time. It's time. This is not an active aspect for you. Um, let me rephrase that. It's time for this new season of your relationships to unfold in your life. You are ready for it. The only action you need to take is to embrace yourself fully, accept yourself, be like, this is me, this is who I am, this is what I like, this is what I don't like, take it or leave it. To stand strong in yourself and to continue developing and building the strong foundation in yourself with genuinely starting and building this self-love and genuinely liking yourself, spending time with yourself and taking care of your interests. You need to trust that you doing that, however small this may seem at the beginning right now, this will generate uh, the kind of energy and draw the people into your life that are aligned with that with your energy, with your interests. They are coming. And yes, it's going to feel very risky to open yourself up and you can take your time with it. You can do it in stages and in small steps. You don't need to run full force at it. Because the people that are going to come into your life understand that kind of energy. They understand your, your experience. If you tell them that you need to take it slowly, they're going to be like, okay, I get it. Take your time. I'm here, you know? Do your thing, but I'm here. And it's that kind of different energy. I do have a few last cards for you that I want to look at, but this already makes me happy, I will say. Like I feel like I feel the energy of the people that are that are wanting to come into your life and I fucking love it. I love it. It's great. They're so like ah, oh, they're so gentle and they have such a such a nourishing and nurturing kind of energy. Like really um like I'm getting teary eyed when I'm thinking about this kind of energy that they have versus the energy that you encountered earlier in your life. Like 
Oh, they're not even in the same kind of universe, you know? I love these people. You're going to love them so much. And oh my God, are they going to love you? Oh. All right. So yeah, we have Temple of Truth, Throat Chakra, Authenticity, and Self-Expression. I mean, it's not a surprise, right? We spoke about you saying like, this is me. Take it or leave it. And then we have angelic frequency. Angel angels are here. You're a safe, potent connection. Um, and we have serious star blessings. Yes, proceed. Be seen. Wow. Yes, proceed. Be seen. Push through. Be seen. Allow yourself to be seen. I feel like this was at the center of your reading. But I do feel like reading the, from the guidebook about the angelic frequency because I feel like it's important. Let me, I don't know where my guidebook is. Let me find it for a second. Angelic frequency. Angels are here. You are safe, potent connection. The angelic frequency is the energy of the angels and the angelic kingdom, which is aligned to service, devotion, authenticity, and love. When this frequency comes to us, it's because the gateway of our heart has aligned with it. We've essentially become an angel upon the earth. Angels are the heartbeats of source, and so when we are in touch with the angelic realm, we are also connected to the heart of God. This card features a being of light. The streams of light surrounding it are the angelic frequency pouring down the light upon our life. This image also unlocks our soul memories of our guardian angel. Before we were in this life, we danced across the midnight sky and, as the universe follows the law of attraction, our angel was attracted, attracted to us because our likeness was also in them. So we became connected and since then our angel has been with us through every lifetime and every experience. Connect. Visual visualize yourself connected by surrounded. What? <laughs> Connect. Visualize yourself surrounded by golden light and attract the angelic kingdom into your world. Silently say, thank you angels for reminding me of your presence. It feels so good to know you are here. Welcome in their light. And your message is, angels are drawing close at this time, so be open to signs and synchronicities that confirm this. It's important for you to know that through your actions, choices, and service, you have upgraded your spiritual connection and your frequency. Rejoice, for you may be rewarded with abundance and blessings at this time, and you have been making choices that are not just for your own good, greater good, but for that of all of those around you. Your guardian angel is with you now, helping you remember your infinite... Your guardian angel is with you now, helping you remember your infinite power and potential. Reach for the stars and trust that all the efforts you have been making, both internally and externally, will bring blessings and opportunities. The path you are on is aligned to your highest good, and the support you need is there for you. You are cherished by angels. And as I was reading this, I felt called to, to put one angel meditation in the description box in, in under, for an extra resource for you. So it will be down there for you if you're interested in that. Um, I'm also going to leave like a throat chakra meditation in the description box for you as well. If you want to work on that, um, as well as maybe an EFT tapping session surrounding friendship. Probably, probably I'm going to put this down in the description box for you as well. Um, yeah, allow yourself to be seen. I mean, we've talked about this. This is the message that the Hawksbird has for you today. And I will say there are, from my side, three additional resources coming your way surrounding this topic of taking risks. The first one is going to be an EFT tapping session to help you release uncomfortable memories, feelings, and um, thoughts, yes, thoughts, <laughs> surrounding this topic of uh, taking risks. The second one is going to be a Reiki-infused affirmation track surrounding the power quality of taking risks and feeling courageous to take risks. And the third one is going to be an Osoyo Reiki treatment to harmonize your body, your energy bodies, 
and cleanse out this kind of energy. If they're out already, you will find them in the pinned comment down below. If you're watching this at This Goes Live, it's gonna come out uh, a couple of days later, like just in the end of this week. Um, yeah, that is what I have for you today, my lovely pile number threes. And have a beautiful rest of your day. I'm happy that you're here. I'm happy that you're growing. I'm happy that you are considering opening yourself up again because you have a beautiful energy and oh my god are they gonna love you <laughs> that's all i can say for now have a beautiful rest of your day today bye